Hi guys, welcome back to Algods. In this video, we are going to discuss a question in which we have to find the kth smallest element inside a sorted matrix. So first of all, let's let us understand what a sorted matrix is. In a sorted matrix, we have all the rows, all the elements in rows and the columns in a sorted manner. So all the elements are sorted in ascending order in a sorted matrix and we have to find the kth smallest element in that matrix. So let us take a sorted matrix. So this is a 3 cross 3 sorted matrix and let's say we have to find the 7th smallest element inside this matrix. So the first approach that comes into our mind is that take out all the elements of this matrix and push them in an array and then sort that array. So if we take out all the elements of this matrix and sort them, we would get an array containing elements in the order 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have obtained the sorted elements and we have to find the 7th smallest element. So we are going to return the answer as the value stored at index k minus 1. So we are going to return the value stored at index 6. So value stored at index 6 here is 9. So our output should be 9. Now this algorithm involves sorting of n square elements. So the time complexity would be order of n square log of n square which is bit time consuming. So we have to think of a algorithm which takes much, much less time to solve this question. So in this video we are going to discuss a better approach which would involve use of binary search and some optimized counting techniques. Now before applying binary search we need to know that the element present at 0, 0 at index would be the minimum and the element present at n minus 1 comma n minus 1 index or you can say that last index inside this matrix would be the maximum. I am considering a matrix of n cross n dimension. So for that matrix 0, 0 index holds the minimum value and n minus 1 comma n minus 1 holds the maximum value. Now I am going to store these two values inside variables low and high. So low will store value at 0, 0 and high will store value at n minus 1 comma n minus 1. Now as a matter of fact we know that the kth smallest element would exist between the range low to high. So I am going to apply my binary search algorithm in the range low to high and I am going to search for the element which satisfies the condition of the kth smallest element. So for every loop run of the binary search I am going to calculate the value of mid and mid can be computed by the formula low plus high divided by 2. So for every mid we find I am going to use a function count to calculate the number of elements which are smaller than or equal to the value of mid. Let's say the value stored um, value comes out as num. Now there might be two cases. First case would be when num is num is less than k and the second case is when num is greater than or equal to k. So for the first case uh, we would shift the value of low to mid plus 1. Now why are we doing this? Because we know that our answer wouldn't exist between the range low to mid. So I am updating the value of low to mid plus 1. Now my new range is between mid plus 1 to high. Now the other case would be when num is greater than or equal to k. So for this I am taking a variable answer in which I am storing my value of answer. So I am going to store value of mid inside this answer whenever this case is satisfied and I am going to reduce my search space from the right side. So I am going to update the value of i as mid minus 1. So I am going to check whether 
एनी अदर केस एग्जिस्ट वेयर नम कम्स आउट ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू के इन साइड द रेंज लो टू मिड माइनस वन इफ दिस कंडीशन सेटिस्फाइड देन वी आर गोइंग टू अपडेट द वैल्यू ऑफ आंसर अगेन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डू दिस अंटिल द वैल्यू ऑफ लो इज लेस देन इक्वल टू हाई सो दिस इज द लूप कंडीशन इफ दिस इज ट्रू देन वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यूसली कंप्यूट द वैल्यू ऑफ मिड एंड काउंट द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स विच आर लेस देन इक्वल टू द वैल्यू मिड and then both the these conditions have to be checked and after the loop run i am going to return the value of answer now let's discuss the two cases which might confuse you while applying this algorithm so first of all we'll discuss why didn't we break out of the loop when the value of num came out to be equal to k so for this case i am taking a 3 cross 3 matrix and i have sorted all the elements and the elements are 1 2 3 4 5 7 8 10 and 11 now i am going to apply the algorithm i have stated earlier so i have the minimum value as 1 and the maximum value is 11 so low points towards 1 and high points towards 11 now we are going to calculate the value of mid which comes out to be 6 and we are going to count the number of elements which are smaller than or equal to the value 6 so the value comes out as 5 now if we had to search the k at smallest element where k was equals to 5 then in in that case we would have given the answer 6 if we broke out of the loop when this condition was satisfied so we know that 6 doesn't even exist inside the matrix but we are giving the output as 6 so that is the wrong approach so to avoid that we, what we did was we reduced the value of high to mid minus 1 so we are actually reducing the bound from the right side now we are going to search inside the search space from low to mid minus 1 and we are going to check whether any element satisfy the condition where the number of elements which are smaller than or equal to the value which we are searching for comes out to be k so in that case we are going to update the value of answer and our new answer becomes equal to 5 so this is how we have handled this case when the value of num comes equal to k now the second case when the value of Num comes greater than k. Why are we storing the value of mid inside the variable answer? So to understand this, let's take a case again. The value of mid which we are searching for is a. The frequency of occurrence of element a inside the matrix is greater than one. So I am taking the frequency as f. Now the number of elements which are smaller than or equal to the value a comes out as y. So in the sorted form. all these a's would occur consecutively so there would be f occurrences of the element a inside the sorted form and this index would be y and this index would be y minus f and we have been given that the value of k is less than y so there is a chance that the value of k is greater than y minus f as well so our answer could be a so to avoid losing our answer we are continuously storing the value of mid inside the variable answer even if the value of num comes greater than the value of k so we have handled these two cases as well where first case was the value of num comes great equals to k and the second case where the value of num comes greater than k now let's discuss how we are going to implement the function in which we are going to count the number of elements which are smaller or equal to the value which we are searching for so we are going to see the implementation of count function so for doing that we are going to consider a matrix a general matrix of n cross n size for every column we are going to compute the number of elements which are less than equals to the value mid which we are searching for so initially i am going to use two iterators one would point towards row and other would point towards column 
and we will start from the leftmost bottom bottom cell. So for the first column, we are at n minus one comma zero zeroth element. So we check whether the element present at this index is greater than mid or it is less than mid. If it is greater than mid, we know that all the elements present inside this row would be greater than x. So obviously they would be greater than the value mid. So for the next cases too, we don't need to search inside this row. So this is how we are reducing our search space. Now if the case would have been where x was less than or equal to mid and x would have been located at some index, row index i, then we know that i plus one elements are present which are less than or equal to the value of mid. So before any starting the loop, we had initialized the value of count as zero. Now in this case, we are going to add i plus one inside the value of c which a uh, variable which we are using to store the count and we are going to move towards next column so as we have finished searching for the jth column right now so we are going to run this loop until i and j satisfies the bounds of the matrix so i should be greater than equal to zero and j should be less than n now we are going to run this loop and in the end we are going to return the value c in which we have stored the value of count of number of elements which are smaller than or equal to the value of mid. So let us an an analyze the time complexity of this function count. So the maximum number of iterations that this function can perform is 2n and the maximum number of iterations that binary search would take would, e would be equal to log of maximum value. So the time complexity for this algorithm would be of order of O of 2n log of maximum value which is almost reduced by a factor of n in terms of sorting case. So this is a much better algorithm which we can use to solve this question. If you found this video interesting and you learned some new concept out of it then you may like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Alcott. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you guys.